and welcome to Awake Ones. I'm Alexandra Winman. I'm Stacey Lynn Floyd. I'm Lorraine Flaherty. And I'm Sally Quinsett Nash. And today we're going to be discussing the return of the Rubenesque figure. Actually, we're going to be discussing a lot more than that. We're going to be talking about nutrition. Uh, we're also going to be talking about this recent uh, trend, which I don't think is actually a trend, but seems to be happening for a lot of people on the awakening path, especially women, of this unexplained weight gain. So in, the middle. <laughs> in this middle region here, uh, we've all we've all been experiencing it. I know many others who've been experiencing it. Mm. And Stacy here, who is a, an amazing uh, chef and multi-dimensional Being. wizard. <laughs> has a, a, a unique take on it. Am I right, Stacey? Yes. <laughs> Let's hear it, girl. Yeah. I'm, I'm in. <laughs> I need answers. <laughs> I think this take, maybe my personal take is because it makes me feel better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. And I kind of back everything back to energy. Right? So, you know, we're in an incredible period of time, the shift on the planet. And our bodies are integrating a new energy like we've never seen before. So in one way, we have no idea what it's going to do us, what, you know, how it's going to show up in our bodies. And we do live in a culture where thin is the preferred flow. Um, if you look back in other cultures, you know, back even a hundred years, it was acceptable for us to, you know, be a little plump. Even in some countries, they still want their women a little bit more plump in certain areas. Um, so I think that's something to take in consideration too, how much of the story we're carrying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if that story is clashing up against us being, you know, or on the path to being these fully awakened ones, is that story clashing? You know, do, is it a story that we need to let go mm -hmm. of? It, are our bodies showing up saying, hey, <laughs> This is the new you, girl. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I think about all of those different elements and when we look into nutrition, you know, what's happening with our food on the planet right now, you know, you know whether you are a vegan or you're a vegetarian or you're just a mindful eater or you just eat whatever, you know, we're still being impacted with the same issues. You know, the mm -hmm. weight is coming on in a very different way. Mm -hmm. Intuitively, I feel that because we are integrating such incredible energies, you know, energies coming from Mother Earth Gaia, we're, you know, integrating those energies, bringing them up, and we're doing our practices, we're bringing them from, you know, a higher field, our multidimensional field, they're coming in, everything is moving into the center. Mm. Yeah. And mm. where is our center growing and expanding? <laughs> in that area. But this is very new energy. Yeah. So, you know, from my practice as a holistic chef and, um, and I have a certification as a health coach, one of the things I notice is that our food that we eat is directly the tied to our emotional well-being. You know, whatever's happening in the quadrant of our lives, what's happening in our relationships, what's happening in our finances, what's happening in our creativity, what's happening in um, our career, is affect our food, what we eat, is directly affected by that. And once we become much more aligned with the sectors of our lives and where the balance is, we'll start being able to tie them into as to what we're eating. Mm -hmm. We eat certain things at certain times depending on where we are in our life. No, I eat chocolate all the time. <laughs> no exceptions. <laughs> no, but actually, that's, that's that balance. has changed. That's that has balance. changed. <laughs> yes, my God. But so, if we have this new energy that we've never experienced before yeah. in this way, and this integrating in our bodies, what happens is that if we're if the body feels like it's in a crisis, it will gain weight. Mm. You know, when we're in fight survival mode, we will gain weight. There's certain things that we are wired to do if we feel like there's something different and we don't know what it is. Mm. If we're not in a trusting mode, unconsciously the body is saying, Oh my god, I don't know what this is, this new energy is coming in cellularly, something's changing, let me put on the weight, let me protect you. I, I got you, I'm protecting you. Right. And I like to see it as that something that's happening now. My body's actually doing what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It's giving me that extra padding and pushing <laughs> so that I can 
integrate these new energies. That's my focus. So I personally have taken a lot of my attention off of my weight and really my attention in, into what's happening with these new energies. That's what I need to really be nursing. Still at the same time, I'm being very aware of what I'm eating. And I'm not saying go on a diet or restrict yourself, you know, don't eat so many carbs and don't eat, because everybody's body is very different. Yeah. Some people need more things, some people might still need animal protein, some people might need to completely be vegetarian, some people might need to be completely vegan. I think you really need to listen to your intuition. However, start mapping what's happening with the food that mm. you're eating. So if you could all, all of a sudden, if you could eat potatoes mm. and you're noticing that something's very different is happening in your body, it could be that all of a sudden you've developed a lot allergy to potatoes. Mm. And that's actually triggering that extra weight. The body's actually using that as a, you know, a cushion of fat. I'd much rather my body use my excess of eating green vegetables as a cushion of fat because then I can really process that a lot better. Yeah. Avocado, yeah. nature's butter. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you, know, start, you know, find yeah. the foods that really are resonating mm -hmm. with your body. It makes your body hum and feel good. So that if you do need at this time to carry this weight and carry it with grace yeah. mm -hmm. and carry it with love, you know, it might be time to go out and get some new clothes that are more fluid. I don't have a problem with that. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing that for the Just long. go to your closet. <laughs> yeah. Get with your friends, you know, <laughs> trade some clothes. I just want to fit back into the stuff I've already got. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the... Yeah. And just and, and let's just like keep talking to each other. Let's keep you know really. I feel like supporting each other during this time period, mm -hmm. um, because in six months we could all just be like super, <laughs> you know, all of a sudden and it's gone. Yeah. But that's my take. We talked earlier about you like talking to the body and and having the conversation with the body. Is it worth having the conversation with the body that whatever energy it's trying to, to process or integrate that you don't need to protect me against it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That would be a wonderful kind of experiment to mm -hmm. play with and see what happens. Yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds like a really good idea. I mean, I am having to very consciously work on being more in love with my body and being kinder to my body because when this first started happening, it's been a good year and a bit now, I think, that I've been in, it's, it's a state of confusion because I've never had to think about it at all. Right. I've always eaten quite mindfully and I've always eaten, healthy. I do like a bit of chocolate every now and again, but not <laughs> that excessively. So to have changed, and I think this is what we were saying, you haven't changed anything. anything. Mm. I'm still, still kind of the same level of exercise and the same kinds of foods, but for my body to have transformed so dramatically, I mean, it's a, over a stone in weight, mm. and then none of my clothes fitting me. So having to in a really short space of time, in a really short space of time, and and suddenly, and again, because I'm not overly yes. conscious of it. It's not something that I, you know, I would never be weighing myself. Mm -hmm. Not. The, the, the way I live my life anyway, but suddenly when you go to a wardrobe and try and put something on that's your favourite, mm. and now it just, not only will it not go, do up, it just won't go on. Mm. So they're a big question about that, but I'm having, I've had to just go out and buy some bigger pieces, and I'm just trying to be really kind to this body, because the tendency or the temptation is to go, Ugh, exactly. what is this? Yeah. It, it feels like some alien being has taken mm -hmm. over my my, my whole works. body. And it's still got you've got yeah. the arms, you've got the legs, you've got the, it, it, it. It still works. It's it, being kind to your body is so. Yeah. You still yeah you have to be so kind. to what some people where some oh, people no. are with Absolute, their body absolutely. what it's capable of. Yeah yeah. You can't dislike being. I refuse like, to do it anymore. Yeah. Just yeah. refuse, and that's why I think I have like bought quite a new a few new outfits over the last couple of years because it's like it's more than just needing to buy a bigger size it's about celebrating the body it's yeah. like I'm, I'm wearing less jeans i'm wearing more dresses i notice mm -hmm. i'm wearing more color more floaty kind of flamboyant sort of things and it feels like a celebration actually of the body because i feel like i've broken through and a lot of people i think are finding this this as women, we're kind of taught to punish our bodies, yes. you know, and I, and I look at the, the reasons behind. I used to exercise three or four times a week. I used to really, really watch what I put in my body, but not in a mindful way, more in a really restrictive kind of a way. And I know that many of us have been through that same process. 
And then I think I went through such a, a dark night of the soul thing that then I just was like, do you know what? I'm just going to give all of that a rest. Yes. And every time I felt into it, it was like, do I want to go for a run today? No, I don't. Okay, I'm going to sleep in. And do I want to eat some chocolate? Hell yes, I want to eat some chocolate. So I let it happen. And it's almost like I have been observing it while it's been happening. It didn't feel kind of overnight for me. I've seen it kind of creeping on. But every time I've felt into it, it's been a bit like, well, I'm not ready to exercise again yet. And no, I'm not ready to rein this in again. Mm-hmm. And actually, I think I'm breaking an old pattern mm-hmm. of punishing the body to try and fit it into somebody else's idea of what it's supposed to look like. Yes, I think that's yeah. interesting. It's Absolutely. like, celebrate it. It's Venusian. It's, yes. you know, it's, it is, and you know, like I find that it, having the conversation with the body, I, I used to do it all the time. I haven't done it for a while. And the other night, I was having a chat. I woke up, I did it before I fell asleep, just had a chat with the body, I love you, I'm just sending love. I woke up feeling so rejuvenated. The next morning I actually think my skin looked better, everything just looked better. And I think, I talked to the plants, and I talked to my cat, why don't I talk to my body? We talked to our clients. (laughs) Talked to our clients, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think it's, you know, if we really think we want to rejuvenate and turn back the clock, it has to start here. Cool. Mm -hmm. And... We have to start having those conversations with ourselves. You know, a practice that a friend of mine gave me when I was um, 13 years old. You know, I was very fortunate to be surrounded by all these older women and they really, you know, took me in and taught me some incredible things about being a goddess at a very early age. And one of the things she, she I remember her coming in and saying, okay, this is moisturizer. Every time you take a bath and shower, head to toe. And my mother had taught me this, but she really kind of drove it in. And then she gave me some of those scrubby gloves. And she said, you must scrub your body at least four times a week. And I'm like, okay. Now this she gave me at 13. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's been my ritual right now. I'm now 50. And what she was really, what I learned, what she was teaching me is that if I have that much contact with my body, Mm -hmm. then my showers are not fast. My baths are Mm -hmm. not fast because I have to scrub every inch of me from head to toe. And I have to see what's happening from inch, you know. Mm, yeah. And once I get out of the bath, every bath, I use coconut oil from head to toe. Mm. Between the toes, <laughs> up between, you know, up into my, so you're looking, I'm watching, I'm looking, I'm aware of what's happening with my body. What a wonderful time to say, I really love you thighs that have this extra <laughs> knees and I really love your knees and thank you so much for holding me up, especially because we walked so much yesterday and, and really taking that time. How important is it for us to take that time to really love and touch our bodies as women, you know? In our society, we're always putting it out to someone else to touch us. You get a massage therapist, you might have your partner, your lover. What about yourself? You know, really feeling your skin, really feeling what's happening with my muscles over here, you know, what's happening with my joints, and and taking that time. Then we have a direct connection that leads into, I can guarantee you, if you're having a practice of really, feeling yourself up in that way, in like a non-sexual but a very intimate and loving way. And you can make it sexual if you want to. Sing to the body, whatever you want to do. Um, it makes a, it's a bit, it's a different choice of what you're eating yeah. once you sit down, Yeah. right? Because you've had that connection mm-hmm. with your body now. So you may choose to have that chocolate cake, which I, it's just chocolate cake. Change but you're going to also chocolate. choose to have a big green salad. Yeah. Right? You might choose to put them together, which I often do. Um, but your choices are different because mm-hmm. now you have a relationship with the food that's feeding my body and the impact of what it's having. You yeah. know, I can't stress that enough. Go out. Get yourself some scrubby gloves. I've got the scrubby gloves. Get yourself some really I'm good, these beautiful s- soap. You know, your skin sheds. Yeah. yeah. Every seven days, you can do that your skin. Dry brushing as well. It's really good. So okay. imagine that you're brushing the, those off. So you're going to see a big difference in your face and the hydration of you know how your body is and how your skin is. And you're also going to get a big kind of boost, I believe, in your digestive system too, mm-hmm. because you're starting to rub and you're touching, and the body is responding. 
Yeah, because I'm pretty convinced. I mean, over the years, and you know, I get lots of people getting very upset with me because I've never ever used any creams or lotions or anything ever. I don't actually like the feel of stuff on my skin. It makes me feel a bit claustrophobic. So. You know, even skin on my face, I've quite often gone out and bought really expensive creams and eye creams and stuff, but I just don't put them on. I, mm -hmm. I try them twice because I think I should, and then... Ugh. But I'm pretty convinced, and I'm sorry to the product companies, I'm sure some of them do have miraculous qualities and they do really work, but I'm really convinced that actually it's not so much the cream, it's the fact that people take time yes. applying yes. it and rubbing it and touching their skin and touching yeah. their face, and the more they actually yeah. do that, that is the bit that's actually making the difference, not necessarily mm -hmm. the components in the cream. So yeah, I probably should be a lot more. <laughs> You've got quite natural natural in your skin yeah, anyway, I do. don't I'm you? Quite so lucky that I have quite oily skin. Yeah. And you may be naturally hydrated. Yeah. Yeah. So that's happening. you know, that's happening. But I'm always told I've got great skin and what products have I used on my skin? It's like water? Yeah. <laughs> water. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I'm just not I'm not a high maintenance beauty girl, as you know, yeah. it's, it's um I love I love the creams. I put I put oil yeah. on at night. On my no. face. I, I need it, my uh, face in oil at night. Dryness. It's always a uh, coconut oil. Mm. I've always treated my skin like sort of black skin, and, yeah. and you know, yeah. I had a lot of friends who were. It's like, oh, what are these products with my dry old skin? Yeah. You know, this works for me. Yeah. But it's more natural the coconut yeah. oil. Because um, my skin tends to be drier. Right. Yeah, me too. So, yeah. so I need to, yeah, the hydration. But again, it's about finding what yeah. works for you. But so actually, get that oil. But you put it on like my skin, I put it on, it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. The I like the sweet almond oil as well. <laughs> yeah, that's really yeah. good because yeah. it's not, it's quite absorbent. And I bought recently in Spain, it's delicious. I wish I'd bought more of it. Natural avocado oil mm. with um, some lemon oil in it. Mm. And it's got this lovely zesty, oh my god, it's the most beautiful, it's 100% natural. And I'm just slathering it on at night. And then when I get to bed, Tony's like, try to keep the mozzies away, I love. <laughs> it's like, hello, zesty, right? Yes. That's probably why I'm not sleeping, it's very zesty, it's kidney yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Awakening. Yeah, but again, it's like doing what's intuitively right, right and actually just taking care. So I've, I've started, I started working with the trainer to do some exercise and do some stuff, but again, it's working holistically and doing stuff that I enjoy. And it's quite funny, because in the past, I've put myself through rigorous workouts in the gym yes. and, and oh, done stuff that I don't really like, but I feel like I should do it. Yes. And and this time round, and this, but the thing is, there's some exercises in yoga, for instance, which, you know, I know really, that I really, really enjoy, and there are some that I don't like. Yes. And I said this time when I'm working with this trainer, like, you're, you've just shown me an exercise. I don't like that one. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to lie and yeah. pretend you to, to you time. that this is going to happen. It, I know myself. It's not going to happen. But if we can create a routine where actually I quite like these things to do, and I can yeah. put music on, and it almost becomes more of a dance that I'm doing. And that's what I've done. I've started to actually create something where I'm celebrating my body, yes. and I want it to be healthy. And because I know I have a very kind of not, well, you know, I'm stuck in a chair for hours and hours of the day. I'm really conscious that my body's getting stiff and that I'm not actually giving it the attention. So even though I'm never going to be a creamy, you know, I'm never going to do all of that necessarily, but I just, I really want to take care of my body. I really want to let it know that it's important and that I am going to look after it and that I want it to stay supple and I want it to stay healthy so that whatever size it is, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If I feel comfortable in my body and it's the best thing. being nurtured. Yeah. That's it, we're all unique and you have to work yeah. with what works for you. Like it's it's always a choice, isn't it? If something resonates, yes. go with it. If it doesn't, yeah. don't. I know. But it's wonderful that we can share it because yeah. you know, to other women that are listening and watching, you know, we're we're supporting them on across the range yeah. on different ideas of what you can do. Like it's okay yeah. to create your own exercise yeah. program, yeah. you know. But and it's okay even that yeah. you know you may be experiencing this weight gain and, and yeah. yeah, you know you could sit there if you don't have contact with other people who are going through it and think, well, what's wrong with me? Yeah. and that's that's kind of not the place to. No, it's yeah. definitely not yeah. the place to sit. And I'm really conscious that I've actually I've just kind of changed how I dress to not dress how I think I should dress but to dress how I'm actually comfortable yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm resetting just the expectations that I have of myself so I can be comfortable yeah. so that I can be 
happy in it. So it's yeah. liberating, isn't it? It is quite liberating. I'm wearing this Moomoo dress today. <laughs> oh my god, I'm again. living a Moomoo. Uh, I'm going to put my <laughs> beads on and I'm going to be looking so good. But it because it just it feels good. I don't always want something tight wrapped no. around that. I mean, when I was 20, you know, uh-huh. I'm the tightest thing you've ever had. But I was like, this thing. But now it's just like, oh, can we just like, I mean, half tense, just take it off. <laughs> it needs to have a little elasticity to it. A little so stretch. A little stretch. Well, stretch is a long way. Because I want to be comfortable. Yeah. And we can be just as beautiful, just Absolutely. as elegant, just as sexy, just mm-hmm. as vibrant. Yeah. You know, with different choices of clothes. I can't wear the skinny jeans anymore. My legs just look like sausages in there. It's just not working. <laughs> for me. <laughs> Good sausages though. Tasty <laughs> sausages. <laughs> sausages. <laughs> Not chipolata. <laughs> In the world of, of being a holistic chef and mm. you, we were talking about the body telling you what it needs and you talking to the body and you were saying about the food telling you what it wants, um, how it wants to be put together and I think yeah, because this woman is a magician when it comes to food. Yeah, I've really never known combinations you know, of food ever like she creates. What what I find is interesting, like there's a new rage right now of recipe boxes. Yeah. Which yeah. on one hand, as you know, a person that intuitively cooks, I think it's wonderful because I think a lot of people it's teaching people that to cook more. Yeah. But the next level of it to me is being intuitive. Mm. And how do you know what your body wants? Mm. How do you know what to put in that pot? And you now how do you start connecting with your food? So I think about what is, you know, we're so present with our phones. Mm. You know, we know everything that's going on about our phones. and We know how to work it and the information. That, imagine being that present with your food mm. and really creating a connection because that food has an intelligence, yeah. you know, it has a consciousness and it's, it's not just fuel, you know, it's, it's actually connecting with every aspect of ourselves. So to me, you know, I really love grocery shopping and I love going and looking and looking at foods and um, I think taking the time to really appreciate the beauty of food. You know, I, I, ha- I wish I would have brought them with me, but today I got my, my organic, uh, vegetable box delivery and I had this beautiful just sexy like kind of purpley green chard you know it had these beautiful the purple veins that moved through and the leaves were huge and this fresh spinach and the leaves were like like huge elephant ears and I got so excited just touching it you know and I have a process of how I wrap it to keep it really fresh for a, a few days and you know, it was like getting in there and, and in that time period of just handling it, I'm energetically connecting with it. It's starting to talk to me. And what I was hearing loud and clear is, you need some of this spinach in your body right now. You need some of this spinach. And it just kept me, you need some of this spinach. I'm like, okay, I'm just spinach the rest of the way. And I had to literally put it to the side, mm-hmm. prep it and get it ready and said, okay, I'm coming back to you. And, <laughs> you know, I got all my groceries ready and my and that was that pile of just green spinach at 11 o'clock in the morning that was saying you need to eat me and I was like all right it's on (laughs) so really having a relationship with your food and letting it speak to you so this is your homework (laughs) next time you go out to the grocery store what I want you to do is just walk through the vegetable aisle and walk through the fruit aisle and I want you to really just look at everything and touch it and smell it and like smell the aroma and feel the textures of it and really listen to your body how your body responds maybe your heart like beats a little bit when you like pick up a banana I don't know or maybe when you like smell like this beautiful like bunches of green it's like this whole kind of feeling of like softness and ooh, that feels really good I feel really calm your body is always telling you mm. what it wants to eat but we don't listen because we're like gotta get to the grocery store gotta get this gotta get it on the table gotta do this slow it down because this incarnation is this time period this being here on this planet you want to get to your purpose slow it down because if you can't listen and hear what your body wants to eat how are you going to hear when spirit is dropping in what your next purpose is Mm -hmm. like everything is connected so you know play with your food 
And and let me tell you, if you do something and it's not good, just throw it away <laughs> and start it. You Stacey, know, I don't believe away. that you've ever made anything that was I good. have made some things and I'm just like, wow, that's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole other flavor category. But just, you this know, is the, it's sorry, this fun. is the only person I know that can make bread out of courgettes and have it be the most phenomenal bread that you've ever eaten. They tell you, the courgettes that I want to be bread. <laughs> Kosha has never told me. I want to be a house, to be I want to be a healthy cake. Those are a food channel. <laughs> <I love> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, just I mean, really love your food, and let, and when you the next time you take a bath, put some fruit in your bath. Fruit. Slice oh, that's it. We will never see this one now. I'm this one's a crystal. She's always going to stop in her bath. That always looking for a new bath recipe. <laughs> so what were the crystals? The channeling. The, candles, the fruit. The candles. The, the scrubbing. The scrubbing. scrubbing. The scrubbing. Oh, the whole night. I was in the bath the other night for two and a half hours. <laughs> see, that's me. I have a bath. Yeah. I just recently Fish. had a coconut milk honey bath yeah. with flowers. It was extraordinary. <laughs> oh, I've got some coconut milk. I think you left some coconut milk at my house. I made a laxer out one the other night. I might put the other one in the bar. Yeah, so oh, that's, that dream. would be my, you know, to get intuitive, you know, play with your food. And your bath. And your bath. <laughs> Eat your bath. <laughs> I just have dinner and a bath at the same time. <laughs> Not after a scrub. <laughs> Not after a scrub. <laughs> get <laughs> bolognese bath. <laughs> 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 Chocolate bar. Could you chocolate imagine? Bar, chocolate bar. You would be like chocolate bar. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, now we are going. With no, it. we're going down. It's time bar. to finish up. I think on this <laughs> episode. Maybe getting delirious. <laughs> we're getting delirious. But but deliciously delirious. Deliciously delirious. Yeah. But so yeah. wonderful. So mm. mindful eating, taking care of the body, taking time to love the body, no matter what's going on with it. Yeah. And being kind to you and your vessel. Indeed. Like how you're slowing that down. Yes. I'm bringing it to a close now. (laughs) We're going to finish now. (laughs) Thank you for watching our week ones.